first tour de force tour went about 200 miles north of here on the train to Macclesfield in Cheshire and climbed Keg's Nose. I hope you've seen the programme because for this second one we're going to be a little closer to home to the Cathedral City of Chichester down in West Sussex. And before I depart I'm going to consult the Southern Railway website and try and get a cheap advance ticket down to Chichester. Once there I hope I can go inside the cathedral and photograph the interior and I should mention that the settlement Chichester has been important since at least Roman times so it has a tremendous history and there is a lot to see. Nevertheless I'm going to catch a bus using my bus pass and go down to Bosom Key in time for the late afternoon sun. I shall take two cameras with me, the Olympus EM1 Mark II with the 12 to 100 Pro lens and as backup the EM10 Mark II with the 14 to 42 pancake lens. So if you are ready and would like to join me let's get cracking otherwise we're going to miss the train from East Croydon. Using my usual route I made my way down to the station for East Croydon, where I caught the train to Chichester. This looks like my train. Soon I was swapping the skyscrapers of Croydon with the soaring steeple of Chichester Cathedral. Let's look inside. Ah, oh, hang on a minute. Here comes the boss. Better listen. I have arrived at uh, Chichester Cathedral. Thankfully it is open, but I'm having to handhold the camera. But as the EM1 Mark II and the 12 to 100 Pro lens both have image stabilizers, then there should be no problem in getting sharp images, which I will now show you. One of many treasures in Chichester Cathedral is the Mark Chagall window, unveiled in 1978, interpreting Psalm 150. As I must point the camera up from horizontal, an optical distortion known as converging verticals makes uprights lean inwards, something the eye does not see. However, Stand a little further back and zoom in and converging verticals are minimized. If unable to use a tripod because the cathedral does not allow their use, camera shake may occur due to increased magnification. However, with excellent image stabilization in Olympus OMD range, handholding in this situation isn't a problem. The shutter speed was an 80th of a second, focal length 44 millimeters, that's 88 in film. In post-production, I corrected converging verticals in Adobe Lightroom. And then, down came the rain, shower number one. So I caught the bus to Bosom. Now this looks like it, by which time the rain had stopped. At Bosom Creek there was still complete cloud cover, therefore patterns and foreground interest helped composition. Anyway, shower number two is coming, so I better seek shelter inside the nearby church. Right, smarten myself up because I'm in church, the church at Bosom Key. I took the bus from Chichester and I've had a walk by the 
Bosom Channel. Uh, the weather is a bit mixed at the moment, it's very cloudy, it's raining outside at the moment, but what I am hoping is that the weather will break, we'll get some sunny intervals, high contrast, spot meter off the highlights, could be very interesting if the weather improves. And at the moment, I don't know whether you can hear it, but I can hear the rain outside. So I think I'll wait a little longer inside the church, which incidentally is a very historic church. It has a very fine Saxon arch, and I've taken a picture of it. As anticipated, the sun appeared. When shooting over water, excessive contrast that the camera cannot handle without help is an added problem, resulting in burnt out highlights, lacking detail. It's just pure white, there's nothing there. There are several techniques to help, if not overcome these issues. I prefer to spot meter highlights and then correct underexposure in post-production. It is not perfect. I may add noise when lightening shadows. However, nothing will replace experience, but save to roll first for greater flexibility and control. At low tide, a causeway crosses the creek that is liable to flooding each day at high tide. I was lucky. It gives a different perspective to the channel. From the opposite shore, a classic view back to the village unfolds. An obvious prize for the calendar and postcard shot. Shower 3 was some distance away. So I decided to walk the three miles or so back to Chichester Station. This landscape is completely flat, except for a few trees and bushes and abandoned farm equipment. This brings out a different expertise in the landscape photographer searching for that elusive quality image. There are no hills or mountains to help composition. You're on your own. Help is there with the right sort of weather. Storm clouds were already giving a soaking to communities the other side of the South Downs. But not here, at least yet. By combining their arresting contours with trees, effective and pleasing compositions were possible a dead tree near the end of my march being particularly effective. By now, storm clouds were uncomfortably close. Time to quicken pace. Whilst technique in its many variants is important, success is not guaranteed without an understanding of weather patterns and a knowledge of the landscape beneath your feet. You may feel that a lack of a car a hindrance. That's a choice I leave with you, but I am not tied to one on a long walk. And anyway, when I returned home on the train, somebody else did the driving. The route was guaranteed, and I seemed to have my own private carriage.